Unveiling the Mystery of Indirect Objects in English Hello, Language Explorers. Welcome back to our English Grammar Fundamentals series. Today, we're delving into an essential part of English grammar, the objective case. Specifically, we're focusing on indirect objects and how to use them in sentences. By the end of this video, you'll have a firm grasp of this often misunderstood concept. So, let's get started. To truly master the use of indirect objects, we first need to understand what they are. An indirect object is a noun, pronoun, or noun phrase in a sentence that usually indicates to whom or for whom an action is performed. It's important to note that indirect objects always come after a transitive verb and before a direct object. For example, in the sentence, I gave John a book, John, is the indirect object. The action, giving, is performed for him. One common method to identify an indirect object is to ask the question, to whom, what, or, for whom, what, after the verb. If the answer to this question is a noun or pronoun found right before the direct object, you've identified the indirect object. For instance, in the sentence, she baked her children some cookies, ask, she baked for whom? The answer, her children, is the indirect object. It's important to understand that not all sentences will have indirect objects. Sentences only have indirect objects if there is something or someone receiving a direct object. Consider the sentence, the cat chased the ball. Even though the ball, the direct object, is being chased, the verb, there's no indirect object because there's no one receiving the action of the ball being chased. Sometimes, you might encounter sentences where it seems like there's no indirect object, but it's just presented differently. Instead of appearing between the verb and the direct object, it might come after the direct object, introduced by a preposition such as to or for. In such cases, it's called an object of the preposition, not an indirect object, but it serves a similar purpose. For example, in the sentence, I gave a book to John. John is the object of the preposition to. And that wraps up our dive into the world of indirect objects. We've unpacked what they are, how to identify them, and how prepositions can change the role of similar components in sentences. Remember, grammar is a puzzle, but with each piece we learn, it gets easier to see the whole picture. Keep practicing, and soon using indirect objects will be second nature. Thank you for joining me today. As always, stay curious, and happy language learning.